We like to keep things fresh around here, so today I'm introducing something new. Um, you know how technology is always changing. I can't tell you how, but we got our hands on this new computer software, and now we're able to hear what audience members are thinking while they're dancing. <laughs> We've been tracking people throughout the past week, and it's time for our new segment, What Were They Thinking, Audience Dancing? Sugar, 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 sugar! Uh-huh, and my daughter doesn't think I know how to dance. Fist in the air, move the hips. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, I'm a good, I'll break it down. Hmm. When does, uh, Dr. Phil come out here? Hey, this, this guy's lady's dancing, dancing better, better than, than I thought, thought she would. would. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, let's do mm -hmm. this. That's right. I just got the best parking space. I just got the best parking space. It's right out front. Right out front in front of the studio. Only 10 minutes left on my meter, though, so I really have to wrap this up and then I gotta go. Mmm, what a fun crowd. Such a magical scene. I hope Ellen's giving away Navajo loons today. Just dare to dance. <laughs> and so we hope you came this morning ready to dance with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. I'm a little loud here, Alex. You might want to tune me down just a little bit. I'm Pastor Marsha, and on behalf of Bluegrass United Church of Christ, we welcome you to our worship, whether today's your first time or you're here Sunday after Sunday or sporadic Sundays, we welcome you. And we hope that you find this a welcome place, a place where you can just be who you are. For no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here as part of our family. A few announcements before we get started. We want to thank those who are serving today, and that list is on your bulletin. So uh, who, was our, who are our mowers this week? Jason and Greg. Jason, great, great job. Thank you for mowing. It's a big job, and it saves us a lot of money. Thank you for doing that. As you may know, he's the program director at WEKU, and it went off the air this morning, and so he had to be the one to get it back on the air, and he sent me a text and said he'd be a little late, but wanted me to remind you that if you do have sheets to turn into him today uh, on things that you might be uh, able to do with the church uh, in any of these serving capacities, whether that be the liturgist, reading scripture, and doing our opening prayer, and, uh, or diaconate, serving our communion, or helping with the nursery, uh, any of those kinds of things that you might be able to do if you'll get those sheets to John. He has a schedule that will start next week. He'll notify those of you who he, who he has scheduled for next week, and then we'll get a, a master schedule for the next quarter out very soon. We especially need help, uh, though, with Nursery and Children's Church. So if you are inclined to be good with babies or children, if you'll let John know or let me know uh, or let Anna Gale, our moderator, know or Jason, our moderator, know, we can make sure you on that skip. Some things that I want to bring to your attention that are also on the bulletin, but uh, this coming week, there's, it's a busy week here on Tuesday, or, or night on Tuesday. Church Council will meet at 6 o'clock, and then following that, the Building and Finance Committee will meet at 7.30. So if you're involved in either one of those committees, if you will make sure to uh, attend on Tuesday, that would be great. We've got a lot of important things to discuss this morning. All right. <laughs> we'll have pizza. There you go. Also, on May 9th uh, is a busy day in our community. We will uh, want to remind you of the MS walk that uh, Angela is very, very involved in. And that occurs at 10 o'clock at Masterson Station Park. So that's next uh, week after next, right? Two weeks from yesterday will be that walk. And then some of you like to come to the New Song in the Bluegrass concerts, and where our concert this year is called Here's to Broadway. Lots of fun music, and several of us sing in that group. It is a benefit where 100% of the proceeds go to Movable Feast. And that's at 7.30 uh, on Saturday, May 9th, eight, at St. Michael's Episcopal Church. Are there any other announcements I'm not aware of? 
Rita, yeah. We have uh, therapeutic cocoa, chocolate, tea, and um, decaf and regular coffee for sale again. And um, I cannot order chocolate between May 1st and October 1st. So the last, or my last order of chocolate will take place this week. Um, whatever kinds of chocolate bars we run out of today, I will order. Thank you for coordinating that for us. Others, yes. Yeah. Um, we're collecting canned fruits and vegetables for God's sake on <coughs> Sundays. And then I think the Sunday after that we can't put our canned meat and fish. Okay. But next Sunday is um, fruits and vegetables. Fruits, cans, fruits and vegetables next Sunday for God's pantry. Okay. Also on May 9th is the hard walk out at Kingwood. Okay. Lots of walking for a good calls. Great. Great. Let's hope for good weather. Let's stand and greet one another, church. Good morning. Good morning, my friend. My friend. You may be seated.
Jesus teaches us to love God, ourselves, and each other. His life and death give us an example of God's love. The Spirit of God fills us with love. Our love is made stronger by the community of believers. The love of God is visible in those who believe and follow. May, May we show and share God's love in every aspect of our lives. Join us in our opening prayer. Dear God, we are thankful for your allowing us to be in this special place this morning. We are so thankful that we were all able to make it here safely. And God, we ask that today you be with us and you surround us with your awesome love. We ask that you be with us throughout this service but not only today, God, we ask that you will be with us this week, throughout this week, again, surrounding us with your love and reminding us every day how precious life is and how precious your love is to each and every person that we are provided the opportunity to come in contact with. God, we ask that each and every time that we have the opportunity to show your love that we do not miss those opportunities because of how often we can miss those. God, we ask that you let us continually show your love through our actions, through our words, through our deeds. We again are so thankful for your presence in this place today. We ask that you be with us and guide us throughout this week and today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. What a beautiful morning. Stand with us now, if you would, and let's sing together, Gather Us In. The words will be on the screen. Here in this place, a new land is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See, in this place, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light in the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in and make us 
us your own. Gather us and all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Amen. You may be seated. And as we continue in the spirit of worship, we have this time, that's this sacred time we have together every week to share our joys and concerns with one another. So First Church, what are the joys? What are the things making your heart sing this morning? Starting a new job. We give thanks for that. Other joys. Daniel. Uh, I guess it's the joy and the concern. Um, I've was able to get together um, a put together a surprise party for my dad today. Uh -huh. um, really happy to be able to see my family today. And today's going to be the first day that Blaine has you know met my parents before. But this is the first time he's actually going home home. Yeah. Um, so a little bit nervous about that, but I'm really um, just thankful again for being able to have that time with my family. It's a incredible feat to plan a surprise party. <laughs> How old's your dad? Dad will be 60. They say, all right. Well, happy birthday to dad and good luck to both of you. I'm sure it'll go well. John. Glad to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. <laughs> WEKU is online, I'm assuming, yes. <laughs> Jason. Well, we have some friends that have a three year old daughter who, uh, a, a while back, was given a very bad diagnosis. Uh, that was going to be basically a fatal diagnosis. It was so rare they didn't really know what they were looking at, but after a lot of genome testing and other types of things, they had it wrong. And I think they're pretty sure what she has is still rare and a lot of experimentation going on, but they think it's treatable and it's not going to be the fatal outcome. Good. I remember when you asked prayer for her. Tell Nora. <laughs> she, and she came to vote on you. <laughs> Elnora's in the hallway and she said, you know Clancy's out there driving. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> said way too many drivers, Clancy, that shouldn't be driving. <laughs> Other joys. I think I saw another hand. Yeah, and again. Yeah, it's good to see you all this morning. Stanley. I just want to take time to thank God for everybody. Uh, Y'all pray for me. I'm having trouble with my, my attitude being grateful. And uh, I pray for you. Know, you pray for us too, so my guess is some of us got the same issue. <laughs> well, let's move to, I'm sorry. Michael, hi, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I closed on my house on Friday. So yeah. That means you got it stuck with me now for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We had that put in the contract in small print. Yeah. Some of you may know that Michael is also engaged, and we've also had a conversation because his future wife goes to another church, and that was also in the small print, by the way. So, so as we move to our concerns, certainly we want to. Remember our brothers and sisters in Nepal and what a horrific tra tragedy that is uh, that they are going through right now. Yeah. What is her name, Aunt? Thank you. Thanks for sharing that with us. Amen. Thank you.
tenho. Thank you. Mom and I attended a funeral um, this week in Pikeville of my brother's former mother-in-law, who we remained very close with. And so we want to remember the family of uh, Anna Reed, and her, especially her husband, Raven, and daughter, Teresa, who was incredibly close to her. Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. You can't see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place. Oh, alleluia, sing alleluia. We bless your holy name.
how we count on and how grateful we are for the spirit of your love that lives within us. And how we pray that that spirit of love indeed lives through us. Holy God, in, in my hands, I hold the names of those that we have lifted up in prayer this morning. These are friends and family members who we hold dear to us. They are acquaintances who we know. And we pray, O oh God, for comfort, for healing. We pray for encouragement and sustenance. We pray above all that when life throws these curveballs of unexpected illness and death and tragedies, we pray most of all that your love be felt in a way that they can't imagine. So surround all of these people we have mentioned by name. Surround them with your love. And remind them of your grace and of your presence with them. God, on, on this simple piece of paper, I also hold the names of those things that we celebrate. Birthdays and celebrations. New life. Recovery from illness. And we thank you for those times in our life when we can laugh when we can enjoy. And God, in the in-between times, the in-between times of difficulty and celebration, remind us that you are always with us. And so for those of us who come from our journeys this morning in a good place, in a safe place, in a physical or emotional or financial well-being place. As we give thanks, remind us to look around us and see those who didn't come here from that same journey. And indeed, to look beyond our walls. May we be your presence, your hope, and your love. And for those of us who came here this morning on journeys of concern and anxiety and worry, just touch those folks and remind them that you're going to be with them. You're going to walk the journey with them. And remind us that how we know that is when we walk it together. For it is then that we feel your love and your touch when we feel it from one another. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Nepal in the wake of that horrific tragedy. We know that the needs are overwhelming. The loss and grief undeniable. So even from all this distance, the presence of peace. Can I have the kids, please? I think I have one at least who was, you can just come here and sit on my knee if you want. No, sit there. Good, 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 good answer. So do you know how to spell love? How do we spell that? L-O-B-E. L-O-B-E. Do you love things or people? Do you? Who do you love? My mom. Your mom? Yeah. Do you love school? You do. That's great. That's great. I know another way to spell love. If I can find it up here. Hmm. Have you ever seen love spelled that way? Can you tell what the letters are? Sometimes they're a little hard to read on this. 
See if anybody else can help us from there. How you spell love. C O E. That one's a little bit funny looking in it. It's supposed to be X I S T. It's a word called coexist. And I think that's really a good way to spell love, too. It probably wouldn't get you a good grade on your spelling test, but I think it'd get you a better grade in your life because what it means, and this is a really cool bumper sticker, because these are all symbols of different religions. So there's Christian religion and the Muslim religion and Jewish religion and the Hindu religion and all kinds of different world religions because there's lots of folks in our world. And basically what this bumper sticker calls us to do is to love each other in a way that we coexist, that we allow one another our paths to God and that we don't try to say which one's right or wrong or better or worse. We coexist. We love. Sometimes that's really hard to do with folks who are different from us, isn't it? But it's something that God wants us to do. Because God is a really big God. Let's pray about that. Dear God, sometimes we forget that you're bigger than us. Remind us that you love us all. Not any better, nor any worse, than anyone else. Teach us to love one another like you love us. Amen. Thank you. This is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. But if a person has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need and that person doesn't care, how can the love of God remain in him? Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. Even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Dear friends, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence in relationship to God. We receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son Jesus, Christ, his son Jesus Christ, and love each other as he commanded us. The person who keeps his commandments remains in God, and God remains in him. And this is how we know that he remains in us, because of the spirit that he has given to us. It's a small four-letter word. L-O-V-E. We talk about love a lot, don't we? And we use it contextually in many ways. The love of significant other. The love of family. The love of dear friends who we count as family. The love of our work associates. And we love things, don't we? Nature, art, music. We love to love, don't we? It makes us happy and fulfilled. L 
O-B-E, love. That's what today's scripture passage focuses on for us this morning. So because we love to love, this should be an easy day. In the first verse of our scripture, we're reminded of the love of Jesus, who as Christians we claim to follow. So we heard Daniel read, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. In other words, Jesus lived his life in a way that showed abundant, inclusive, and radical love in an ancient community that didn't get much love from anyone or anywhere. But Jesus loved them. Ah, oh, how he loved them. Time after time, that love was tested. And at every crossroads on the journey, Jesus chose to love the unlovable. His was a demonstrative love. And that, my friends, is the challenge given to us with today's scripture. For let's be really honest. We, we do love to love when it's easy, when it's convenient, when we get something back from it. We love to love. For love sounds really good until, well, until it doesn't. I don't wish for any more natural or humanitarian disasters than we already have in our world. Because God knows there's a lot of distress and destruction. Plenty to go around. And yet... What do we notice occurs when unexpected tragedy happens? Let's think of some that we are all too familiar with. 9-11 and Katrina evoke memories and feelings with just the mere mention of those two names. There are school shootings in Newtown, Connecticut and mall shootings in Aurora, Colorado. We have experienced together as a nation bombings of churches and synagogues and mosques all in the name of God. And then closer to home, I, I know many of you have posted on Facebook that you've walked our beautiful arboretum. And in doing so, if you walk there, you will eventually find the memorial for Flight 5191 which crashed less than a mile from our house in August of 2006. And just three short years ago, several parts of eastern Kentucky was wiped out with an uncharacteristic tornado from which people are still recovering. And this weekend's tragedy in Nepal reminds us of disaster and tragedy. We know it all too well, don't we? I don't wish for any more. And yet, do you join with me in noting something about when disaster or tragedy strikes? It seems to me that it is at those times when the love spoken about in Scripture and the love modeled by Jesus is really going on. It is at those times when we're not so concerned about whose religion is right or wrong, whose skin pigment is more beautiful, whose marriage should be valid, and whose right to belong trumps the other. Have you noticed in tragedy and disaster that people rally together? And they sacrifice their time and their money and their energy and their safety for people they don't even know. People that on a normal day they might not even six, sit next to and certainly want any part of. And yet when the chips are down we rally together to love and nurture and support and sustain. Why 
is that? Why are we like that? These are questions that keep me up at night. Why do we live out unconditional love in disaster and tragedy in such beautiful, powerful ways? And yet put so many restrictions on who and how we love in the normal course of day-to-day -day life. Now I know we have some seasoned, experienced social workers in our church family. And I'll bet you've studied this. But here are some possible reasons for this odd behavior that we share as human family. When we find ourselves in the middle of tragedy, especially that which threatens our life or our safety, we don't have time to take a measurement of those sharing our predicament, do we? Brent and I, like some of you, enjoy going to the movies. And for example, when we go there, there's a diverse mix of folks in the theater. They're young and old. They're black and white and mixed. I'll bet some are right-wing conservative with their politics and others are left-wing liberals. And should we poll the crowd, I would guess that we'd find Baptists and Catholics and megachurch folks with some Jews and Muslims weaved in the crowd. We see men with women and men with men and women with women. We see people obviously on their first date. And we see people obviously having been together a good while. Those are the easy ones to spot. Some arrived in their smart cars. Some arrive in the largest SUV available on the market. The point is, when we go to these public places, movies, ball games, concerts, theaters, discussion groups, etc., etc., there is a wide array of representation all over the board. And so we respectfully take our seats, perhaps sizing each other up. But if and when something occurs, an emergency of any kind, Seems like all the sizing up goes out the window. And we commence to taking care of one another. In the tragedy of 9-11, emergency personnel of all diversities entered those buildings to save the lives of trapped people of all diversities. When Katrina occurred, the nation responded with record monetary gifts. And across our country, New Orleans refugees were supported and given shelter and food and, in many cases, new homes and new lives. When conservative churches took up collections of food and supplies, well, they didn't specify who could get them, did they? Perhaps it was two dads raising a family or... Two moms raising a family. And how about the story of a Christian moviegoer losing her life because she shielded a Muslim moviegoer? When tragedies occur, such as the plane crash here in our own city, when those grieving families arrived at the Campbell House, which became for them their own reality of ground zero, they didn't care whether it was a Pentecostal grandpa, Kenny, a highly educated rabbi, Ross, or a female priest that met them at the door with outstretched arms as they held them close enough to dry their tears. When these things occur, it seems like something comes over us. Something greater than ourselves. Something greater than our differences. Something greater than our stereotypes or opinions or rules. And you know what I think? I think our story today tells us what that something is. 
little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth. Whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. And God knows everything. See, this love thing sounds really good until it gets hard. And let's be honest. Many, many times, it's hard. Even with all the disasters I mentioned and numerous other ones I did not, there are plenty of times when our own prejudice get trumped by the situation at hand. I think it's at those times when our raw humanity surfaces and our efforts to be one shine through. That's a good thing. And yet, what do we do in those in-between times? In between shootings and tornadoes and random acts of oppression or violence, try as we might, we just tend to dig into our own lives, clueless oftentimes about the hurts and needs around us, and admittedly not as eager to help those who we would classify as so different from us in their values, in their beliefs, in their lifestyles. God help us, we just tend to rally around ourselves, don't we? And those like us. And we tend to hunker in with our own, thinking that we just can't break bread, literally or metaphorically, with those who we don't like or don't like us. And yet in the scripture, we're reminded of the cost of discipleship. And the cost is that we love. Not in word or speech because talk is cheap. We're called to love by our actions. Because, I'd like to have a quarter for every time I heard this in my home. Actions speak louder than words. We are called to metaphorically lay down our lives, to sacrifice, to do the inconvenient loving, to do the inconvenient acts which give witness to God's love through us. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, I swear, it is so hard because some people are hard to love. They really are. I really am. <laughs> Whenever we think we just can't, we just can't love, we just can't share, we just can't do it, God intercedes, reminded us that God is greater than our hearts and God is bigger than our divisions. Don't you wish we could ha have disaster, tragedy kind of love for one another all the time? Do you join me in the weariness of the divisions? the constant badgering and back and forth judgment of one another, attacked for how we look and who we love and what faith we follow, attacked for how we identify ourselves in terms of orientation or gender identity. It is exhausting. What might occur if we simply just allow each other room to, to be who and what we are without the labels and just, I don't know, maybe leave it up to God to sort things out. 
What might it be if the millions of dollars and the millions of energy hours spent dividing us were spent feeding the poor, housing the homeless, treating the addicted, caring for the elderly and the differently abled, and educating our kids? Why does it take tragedy or disaster for us to come together? Because we rely on our own hearts far too much. Hearts that have been hurt, hearts that have been broken, hearts that have become hardened. Damaged hearts with such a faint beat that they can't possibly get us beyond self-preservation. Ah, but lest we remember, whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. God is greater than our broken, hardened, faint, beaten hearts. And if we'll let God come into our hearts and live in us and through us, it's then that we love and act out that love in a way that's beyond ourselves. So I pray that you and I and them can learn how to practice that kind of love in the absence of disaster. How our world and our own lives would be so very different. Maybe love could indeed be as good as it sounds without the tragedy we require to love each other as we're called to do. Maybe. At this table, we remember the life of Jesus, who had so many opportunities to divide and to dig in and just be about himself. And yet he showed us how to love, unconditionally, inclusively, radically, wildly. And so we gather to remember that love, and we gather to get strength so that we too can show that kind of love.
gracious God, we come to this table just as we are. We come to this table with our hearts, some of them broken, some of them hardened. And we ask, O oh God, that you renew our hearts. Remind us of the life of Jesus, who taught us how to love one another and taught us how to love you. So use this bread and this cup to remind us of the life of Jesus and to strengthen us for our own life and ministry that you have called us to do. Let us sing the Lord's Prayer. his friends and he took a loaf of bread and after giving it a blessing he broke it and he gave it to his friends and even knowing that they were going to betray him and have some really difficult days he said take Take and eat, for this is my life that I have lived for you and I'm giving for you. And then, as was his Jewish custom, after supper he took a cup. And he said, this cup is a sign of the new covenant. It is my promise that although I will leave you physically, my spirit will be with you. My dear friends, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, whether you walked in the morning, this morning, assured of your faith and assured of God's presence, or whether you walked in uncertain of everything, you are invited to this meal to take a piece of bread and after a time of meditation that is comfortable for you. You are invited to eat and to drink, to remember, to reflect, to be sure, or to question. To just be. To just be.
God, we are so thankful for all of our blessings. And we ask that you continue to abide in us and through us. May the world know that you do abide in us and through us by not just our words and what we say, but more importantly, by our actions. Help us to be your truth in the world. Bless these offerings and however we give of ourselves, our time, our energy, our talents, our resources, however we give. May our gifts be used and put to action in your world. Amen. hymn this morning is they'll know we are Christians by our love and as we sing together I invite you to respond in any way God may be leading you to perhaps God's been saying you should join that church officially if you'd like to do that it's as easy as just saying we want to be in covenant with this church at this time in our life and I would love to welcome you at the front on behalf of our church family let's sing together
Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll seated for just a second. I am thrilled this morning to welcome officially Taylor Napier. Now her family joined some time ago, was it over a year ago, and you weren't here, were you? And she said, you know what, it doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> we already felt like you were one of us and we are thrilled to have you as part of our church family. You give us such hope and such inspiration and she already is so busy. She and her sister are both doing things in the church. And we are so blessed to have you. So welcome officially. And I am honored and thrilled to be your pastor and your friend and to see how your journey unfolds. All right. I want you to sit there with me, if you will, for just a minute. And uh, then I'm going to ask you to go back with me after when we sing our closing hymn so people can get to know you. Okay. Right there. And if you'll sit there and join for just a second, we'll put this light up just in case. Thank you so much. This weekend is the National Weekend of Prayer that many denominations across the country are joining in. Our dear friend Jay Bennett Guest, Ben Guest, who is an executive minister with the United Church of Christ, a, a proud Kentucky boy, um, posted something on Facebook and I sent him a message and said, Ben, with your permission, I'd love to use that in the service. And he said, be honored for you to do so. I read Ben's post. In anticipation of Tuesday's oral arguments for marriage equality at the U.S. Supreme Court, I'm reposting a love offering for marriage equality, an occasion-specific paraphrase of 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, which I, Ben, shared at the U.S. Supreme Court on March 27, 2013, with the oral arguments of U.S. versus Windsor in the Interfaith Service of Love and Justice at the Church of the Reformation in Washington, D.C. And I continue. If I speak like I know everything, like the world revolves around me, but I don't love, I'm nothing but a fool at a microphone. If I can talk about the scriptures and preach better than all the other preachers and get everybody and their sister coming back to church, but I don't embrace love, then I'm just a silly dude in a robe. If I give away all my best stuff and I have all the reverend doctor this and that's in front of my name, but I can't recognize love, then I haven't learned a thing. Because love, she is amazing. Love is relentless. Love is extra generous. Love looks out for the interest of other people, not just oneself. Love doesn't reserve rights and privileges just for some. Love doesn't promote hierarchies to the expense of equality because love just doesn't think that way. Love just doesn't work that way. Love doesn't hurt people and love never leaves people out. No, love goes all the way. Love removes every obstacle. Love appeals to the highest court in the land when necessary. Love gets up really early in the morning after having stayed up really late the night before. That's how love is. Love does the right thing even when it's hard. Love is fair and just, extravagant and wasteful. Love can never be depleted. Now as for long speeches and oral arguments and briefs, they'll play themselves out. And fanatics can cry, surely the world will come to an end. And they too have their rights. But your loved ones embrace at the end of a hard day. The dreams you share. 
the plans you've made, the inside jokes, the kisses goodnight. Till death do you part, that will never pass away. When I was a scared, uncertain, disempowered gay person, I thought and reasoned like a scared, uncertain, disempowered gay person. I thought this day would never come. But now I've put all that behind me, every limiting thought. Yes, we see through murky waters. We're trying to discern every five to four, six to three, nine to nothing scenario. But the day is surely coming when we will be seen and we will see each other as God sees us through love because God is love. We have a lot of things to sustain in this life. There's that quirky optimism that with God, all things work together for good. And there's always hope and hope never disappoints. And that's all nice. But most importantly, we've got this big, expansive, inclusive love. Love. And isn't that the greatest thing? Isn't it? and best friends. We all have different religions, but we have universal love as well. <laughs> I love my sister. Love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Love is kind. Please stand, please. Let us pray. 
God, we're just thankful you've been with us this morning in our service. We're thankful for this community of faith. And so we join together as church family asking you to help us love like you love. Help us see beyond the boundaries and divisions that we so quickly create. And now especially, oh God, we pray for this week. For all the lives and families that will be affected by the arguments that will be heard by the Supreme Court of our nation. May there be discernment, compassion, understanding, and respect. And through it all, may there be justice. May there be love. May there be your vision for equality and dignity for all of our and your human family. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as you go, go in love. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching, marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are singing 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 in the light of God. We are singing, singing, we are singing, singing, we are singing in the light of One more time. We are dancing in the light of God. 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 We are dancing, dancing, we are dancing, dancing, we are dancing in the light of God.